I want to go back. He wants to go back. I want to go back to the farm. Back far away from home. With a milk pail on my arm. I miss the rooster, the one that used to wake me up at 4 a.m. Down on the farm. I'm Scott Bain, they call me the old farmer. There are two brands of tools that I've used for about half a century. First are the original craftsman tools, both hand tools and power tools. The second is harbor freight tools, also hand tools and power tools. Along the way I have used other brands of tools, but primarily these two names are the ones where I have gotten most of my tools. I should add that Tecton tools have been added to my tool supplier list. Tecton is working to bring back Made in America without having to dip into Fort Knox to pay for something. I think their tools are far superior to both Snap-on and Mac tools. I also buy Grizzly tools when it isn't a Harbor Freight tool dressed in green. Grizzly has some impressive tools. If Sears has done something that stood the test of time, it is Craftsman Tools. May they rest in peace. Stanley Black and Decker had the chance to not only keep the Craftsman standards, but take it to a higher level. Granted, Stanley Black and Decker did take Craftsman to another level, but it wasn't higher. It will be unlikely that I will buy a Craftsman product other than the original Craftsman hand tools at garage sales. Harbor Freight has a history that's been a little wobbly when it comes to quality, but to be fair, the last five to ten years Harbor Freight has upped its game so that there are tools for the beginner with no budget, all the way up to those who use their tools to make a living. That means if a tool breaks, it's costing someone money. There are two larger areas where Harbor Freight is dropping the ball, and if Mr. Schmidt wants to play with the big boys, he has to step up and polish up his act. The first is being Coupon City. This isn't a bad idea, except he must have six coupons at different price points for each item he sells. Pricing should be shelf price, coupon price, and membership in the HF Club price, while all the time running a sharp pencil on pricing. I don't know about you, but I feel I have been taken advantage of by Mr. Schmidt when I find a coupon with a lower price that has been published and is still active. Granted, it does not happen often, but occasionally it does happen. The price difference does not warrant getting the few dollars difference by using the coupon after the sale. This musical chairs with coupons is the wasting of too much of my time looking for the best price. It is easier to price out a car than it is finding the lowest price on an item from Harbor Freight. If I don't have time to shop through Harbor Freight's coupons for something, I don't buy Harbor Freight. Usually it means going to the local hardware or big box store, thus leaving Harbor Freight ostracized without a chance of selling me what I'm looking for. A crude estimate makes me think that Harbor Freight lost a couple of thousand dollars in sales from me because I didn't have the time to play musical coupons. As an afterthought to coupons, most folks may not realize that carrying inventory is very expensive. Harbor Freight should have only three major brands besides offering the one-job tools which HF is known for, as well as special purchases. Currently, there are 70 different brands listed on the website, many which could be rebranded within the Earthquake Hercules and Bauer names. Harbor Freight has done this before. Let's simplify shopping and could there be some middlemen that could be eliminated which would reduce prices? I would suggest Earthquake as the top tier instead of being just automotive and then have Hercules for the top end DIY and then Bauer being a semi-pro line. Wherever possible all the other names should evaporate away. Braun flashlights might turn into Earthquake lighting as an example. Harbor Freight is carrying too many names, causing greater confusion. Confusion can lead to fewer sales because the customer can't figure out which standard the item belongs. 
So they just may order the Olight as an example, meaning no sale for Harbor Freight. I don't know about you folks, but I hear about incompatible batteries for the cordless tools all the time. Except for the one-time tools, all battery packs should be interchangeable within a voltage line such as 20 volt or 12 volt. Personally, I'm with the Bauer line of tools. This means if I need a higher quality tool, I will not buy Hercules. If all the battery packs were compatible, I would always buy Earthquake battery packs and then pick the quality level that fits my needs. For example, I would buy an Earthquake hammer drill, a Hercules multi-tool, and a Bauer impact driver, which I have. I know that I will need the quality of Earthquake for a hammer drill. As a point of interest, I have the half-inch Earthquake air impact wrench, which Ave showed is built better than the snap-on version. But I didn't think I would use a cordless impact wrench that much, so I bought the Bauer quarter inch. But I wish I could use an Earthquake battery pack carrying a 4 amp hour charge or more. I could buy the best quality battery and then purchase tool quality based upon what I actually need. What it means for me is that I won't buy Hercules cordless tools at any price. They don't fit my battery pack format. I may buy a corded Hercules tool, but not a cordless. I can understand why Stanley Black & Decker has proprietary battery packs. They're running separate companies with different identities. They shouldn't, but at least I understand. The difference with Harbor Freight is it's one company with different lines and quality levels and tools. Something like the old General Motors with Oldsmobile, Pontiac, Saturn, and Hummer. It comes back to the fact that some tools I use all the time and some only occasionally. The tools I use all the time, I want those to be high quality tools and the others less so because I will not be putting a heavy workload on them. I would buy more cordless tools when the game of incompatibility has stopped. If I were Eric Smith, I would give away, or almost, the battery packs with lifetime warranties while making profit on the power tools. I would give away the fast double battery chargers too. As an example, buy tools during sales days and for $5 more get a 4 hour battery pack and dual quick charger with a lifetime warranty. 90 days for the tool warranty unless you buy a warranty plan. The goal is to offer good products, which you do, and then get the customer committed to the battery pack line for tools. In other words, it wouldn't matter which Harbor Freight cordless tool you bought, the battery pack will work and the customer is linked to Harbor Freight. The goal, I should think, is to get everyone buying Harbor Freight cordless tools, not trying to sell Earthquake, Hercules, or Bauer. Leave a comment and let me know your experiences and ideas. While saying this, we should recognize the tremendous effort Eric Smith has taken for extending the life of coupons, not raising prices, and donating all the safety gear to hospitals during this shutdown of businesses. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Things like this create brand loyalty. As a final note, do you know which brand I had more problems with? The old Craftsman line or Harbor Freight? It was the old Craftsman line by a significant margin. Let me know in the comments your experiences and opinions. As for Mr. Smith, thank you for being a part of our communities. This is the old farmer. Be well.